1978, it was the turn of Yugoslavia to take back control. I was in this happy place, 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 so kaže Kičanovića, Dalipagića i tako dalje. Pa mislim da smo imali veliku moć u tom momentu. Da se nije postavljalo pitanje da možemo od nekoga da izgubimo. Adovanović. This tournament featured a gold medal playoff game for the first time. Jugoslavia ja je finalista do kampionatu mundial de basketball. It would be a classic between two familiar opponents. The Soviet Union has dominated, and after that, we said, we have been appeared, and we have lost a little bit from the Soviet Union. Post the ball of the Yugoslavia. Final of the match, Yugoslavia, champion of the world. The rivalry between these two nations was at its most intense. And as the 1982 World Cup approached, a Soviet legend was emerging from the state of Lithuania. Tai što aš man tai metai, tai čia koks nors turbūt rupiūtis. Nu, tai 17 metų. Tai pirmiausia, tai iš vis buvo nustebimas, kad mane paėmė. Jei ten buvo tik jėtas į neiką, tai buvo kosmose. Kad aš ten išnai. At 7-3, Arvidas Sabonis came to redefine the role of a center, and Lithuania had produced another world-class player. Taip, kad tai yra pašiai diena, aišku, čia kaip, kaip pas mus ir sako, kad yra antra religija, tai... Ką, reikia tik džiaugtis, kad taip yra, kažką turim tokio, kur kiti neturi, gal suprati. Colombia hosted the 1982 tournament, and while Yugoslavia could only manage bronze, Sabonis and the Soviet Union would face the USA for gold. Gomelski was again Soviet coach in another captivating final. Laiminėm ir šitas Duck Rivers. Visas varžybas traukė, super. Ir va tas labai. In the four years that followed, Sabonis reached superstar status in his homeland. Now his nation's standout player, he headed to Spain for the 86 World Cup, a tournament now featuring 24 nations and the three-point line for the first time. But Gomelski was absent. Despite that, they would ease into the last four to face their perennial foes. Atención con Walter. Intenta el triple y lo consigue. Empate a 85, señoras y señores. Cuando se lanza desesperadamente y termina el partido. Somehow, the Soviets forced overtime, 
and they wouldn't stop there. As they had done four years previously, the Soviet Union played the USA for gold. But there was no second world title for Sabonis. For the first time in five editions, a name other than the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia was on the trophy. And the USA were world champions again after a 32-year wait. <laughs> Lithuania gained independence in 1990, and Sabonis would never appear in another World Cup. The Soviets' grip on the Naismith Trophy was slipping. After two bronze medals, a new Yugoslavian golden generation was emerging. This one? Well, at that time, got it. we knew, obviously, we were a really good basketball team, and uh, we had experience playing um, uh, Olympics in Seoul that we lost in the finals. But after that, we won a European championship in Zagreb, and we knew if we play our game, um, we're going to win it. For Tony Kukoc, this was the first taste of a World Cup. But three players remained from four years earlier, including 86 MVP Drazen Petrovic. It was a little stale after the prior generation. They could never reach the heights. And then Drazen came, and, and everybody next to Yugoslavia started to play basketball. They impressed en route to the semifinal, where they faced defending champions, the USA, and their new coach. Okay. Well, the ultimate honor for a coach is to coach his country's team. And I had that opportunity in the World Championships in 1990. Yugoslavia would be too strong from Mike Krzyzewski's Young Americans. Well, the Yugoslavian team in the late 80s and early 90s they were as good as NBA teams. They were a machine, to be quite frank with you. They really influenced change in the game. Divac, Petrovic, Kukut. They had reached their first final since 1978. And once again, Yugoslavia met the Soviet Union. We knew how good they were as a team. Like it or not, these players were constantly around us. So we knew them very, very well. Yugoslavia were imperious. And Kukoc was MVP. When you win a championship and then you get the trophy as the MVP of the tournament, that it makes it extra, extra special. This was the last World Cup in which both teams competed as unified nations. Drazen Petrovic lifted the trophy, but would never play on the global stage again. While Kukoc represented Croatia in 94, Petrovic tragically died age 28. It was a, a huge loss. We knew how good of a basketball team we were, but missing a, a, a main part, something we never managed to cope with. And the Russians 
are going to join the Americans in the gold medal game. Croatia goes down in defeat to Russia. We ended up winning a bronze medal, but um, it was a somewhat disappointment for us. But now when, you, when you're talking about achieve, the achievements of the Croatian national team being third in the world, it, it was a pretty good achievement. Two European nations were leading the medals table, but it was a proud Brazilian who ruled the scoring. Oscar Schmidt. Você acha que eu vou trocar a seleção brasileira para jogar num time? <laughs> De forma alguma. El rebote para Oscar. 35 jogos em campeonatos mundiais. Malabarismo de Oscar, jogada totalmente personal, canasta. Eu não fui para a NBA porque se eu fosse não jogaria nunca mais na seleção brasileira. 843 pontos. Me ofereceram um contrato no cut. Eu falei, muito obrigado. Eu só queria saber se eu era capaz. <risos> Ai, meu Deus do céu. Ah. Meu jeito de ver o basquete era muito treino, meu amigo. Oscar, prova de três e canasta triple. Isso que foi, acontecia à toa, não. Quando o Ayrton Senna falou que falou com Deus, eu falei com Deus várias vezes. Olha, quando eu fazia uma cesta, eu já estava pensando na próxima. E quando eu fazia a próxima, eu estava pensando na outra. Meu jogo era esse. Porque a página da assistência eu pulei. 